Hello, and thanks for joining me for the last video in section 7.1 on linear combinations. In the previous two videos, we saw situations where we were not able to express a given vector w in terms of a linear combination of other vectors, and situations where we were able to do so either uniquely or in infinitely many ways. And so that is the takeaway number two here, is that given w and vectors v1 through vk in Rn, w may or may not be expressible as a linear combination of the vectors, and if it is, that expression may or may not be unique. So to recap also what we did in the previous videos, when we are trying to determine if a given vector w can be expressed as a linear combination of vectors v1 through vk or not, we try and solve the vector equation w equals a1 v1 plus a2 v2 all the way up to plus a k v k. For the and the unknowns in this vector equation are the coefficients a1, a2, all the way up to a k. This vector equation is equivalent to a linear system. That's what we use to solve or to try to solve to a linear system with the exact same unknowns. The augmented matrix A augmented for the linear system is of size n by k plus 1. And the entries of its columns just so happen to match the vectors v1, v2, all the way up to vk, and w. The k plus 1 vectors, k plus 1, is the number of uh, columns with n entries in each of them, the number of rows. In other words, the augmented matrix has this kind of shape. So the column v1 looks like the first column of the matrix. v2, the entries become the second column. vk is the last column before the augmentation bar. And afterwards, we have the vector entries of w. So in the next section, we are going to look a little more geometrically at what linear combinations uh, can tell us uh, about the relationship between vectors and the geometric objects that they can create.